the Lord. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He set me free. He set me free. He broke the bonds. Prison for me. I'm glory bound by Jesus to see glory to God. He set me free. Praise God. It feels good in the house of the Lord here tonight. It feels good in here tonight. It feels good to be here on a Wednesday night. So good to see all of you here tonight. And thank you for helping us uh, navigate through our technical difficulties that happened. A little mishap there, but we got it figured out. And uh, and uh, we'll just uh, we're doing our best. So, but uh, thank you for bearing with us and thank you for worshiping through it. Thank you for worshiping through it, because before we had all of this, we had to clap our hands and tambourines and all that stuff. So that's uh, sing unto the Lord. Open your hymnals to page 83. We're going to sing All Fly Away. You know, that's, 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 going, that's going back. That's going back. And when you get up there and start singing it, and the worship leaders start singing, and then they get to about maybe verse 3, and next thing you know, someone ran off the platform. Someone else went off this way, and then we just had old, old-fashioned throw-down church. Amen, amen. I'm thankful for all the new, the new songs that we do, the newer songs, but I'm thankful for the older songs too, because those older songs were doctrinal songs, and that's our foundation. When you go back and you look back through those songs and read those verses, you begin to see doctrine imprinted in those songs, like when G.T. Haywood said, I see a crimson stream of blood. And it flows from Calvary. It's waves that reach the throne of God are sweeping over me. When he wrote that song, he got the revelation of the mighty God in Christ. That Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. He said, I see it. I see a crimson stream of blood that flows from Calvary. And he began to write the words of that song. And I'm thankful for it. Amen. Aren't you thankful for it? Amen. Amen. So thankful for it. If you have your Bibles, remember the book of Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to continue in our series, The Armor of God. Uh, this is uh, part 3. I've done part 1 and part 2, and those are available on our, our church uh, Facebook page and our church YouTube channel. We have a YouTube channel, the Pentecostal of Waycross, with all of our messages on there that are uploaded. And so you can go back and at, your, at your pleasure and watch various videos there of, of different messages that were preached. But part one and two are on there also and also on our Facebook page as well uh, for you to go back and listen to them to kind of stay with stay with where we're going in the series. This is going to be part three of that installment, but Lord really deal with me about it. And so we're just going to continue on as he leads me to teach on this, teach, preach on this. So we're going to Ephesians chapter six, starting at verse 11. Ephesians chapter six, verse 11, and it's on the screen. I'm reading out the King James Version. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12, for he wrestled not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of darkness, of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, verse 14, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And verse, verse 17 says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. With the help of the Lord, I want to preach to us here tonight on the third part of the armor of God. I'm going to focus on the breastplate of righteousness this evening. But let's pray together. Let's ask God that he would speak to us and help me deliver what he's laid on my heart for us here tonight. Let's all pray together. Lord Jesus, we love you. God, we thank you for now and coming to your presence. I pray. God, I ask that you would open up our ears that we may hear and open up our hearts that we might receive the word. God, speak to your servant, I pray. Have me say, Lord, what you want me to say this precious body of believers that have gathered together in your name. We should give you all the praise, glory, and honor due unto you and confirm your word with miracle signs and wonders to follow. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said amen. 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 Thank you for standing for reading of God's word. You may be seated here this evening. I'm going to do my best to be mindful of time here tonight um, as we dive into part three of this tonight. The armor of God. Tonight I'm focusing on the breastplate of righteousness. For the past few weeks we've been talking about the armor of God and how the Apostle Paul equated the armor of God to that of a Roman soldier. 
The items that Paul references in the armor are these various items, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the, gre the graves or the boots of the preparation of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the belt of truth, which one I preached on Sunday, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The first message that I preached on the armor of God, I focused primarily on the helmet of salvation. This item is very important in our spiritual arsenal as the item protects our head or protects our minds. As the helmet was designed to protect or secure the brain, the mind, the command center. Because you've got to understand that the devil knows if I can attack your mind, I can get you to walk away from the presence of God. Because scripture says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. The devil knows if I can get you to be unstable. If I can get you to be insecure in your faith, if I can get you to have some instability in your life, I can cause you to walk away from the presence and power and majesty of God. I can convince you very well that what you're doing tonight is not real. I can convince you if I can convince you and cause you to believe a lie. That's why you've got to guard your mind. You've got to guard the gateways that you look at. You've got to guard what you watch. You've got to guard what you listen to. You've got to guard who you let speak into your life. Yes, you do. You need a guard who doesn't speak into your life because not everybody wants to speak good into your life. That's right. There are some people that want to speak evil into your life. Yeah. They don't like the fact that God's doing a work in your life and God's trying to bring you out and God's trying to clean you up. But they want you to stay at the same level they're at so they're going to attack you to make you question right. what God's done in your life. That's, right. That's why you've got to have on the helmet of salvation to guard your mind and build up your most holy faith. That scripture says pray. In the Holy Ghost. The second thing I focused on was the belt of truth. And I preached about that on Sunday. That we are to get rooted and grounded in doctrinal yeah. truth. Amen. Yes, amen. That's important. Proverbs 23, 23 says to buy the truth. And sell it not. Yeah. Right. And get wisdom and understanding. But in all things you've got to get understanding. You've got to buy the truth. You've got to fall in love with this Acts 2, 38 yeah. message. Yeah. Where Peter said on the day of Pentecost repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. for the mission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It matters. Doctrinal truth matters because you're going to have people that are going to come to you and say, all that stuff's not necessary. Let's, let's, before I get into this, let's back up a little bit to Matthew 28, 19. Yes, Pete, yes Matthew wrote, uh, baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But when you go read in the Gospel of John... Jesus is talking to all the disciples when he asked them the question, who do you say that I am? Right. They all were sitting there. Matthew included was sitting there. When Peter got up and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. Matthew was sitting there. So when Peter got up and preached on the day of Pentecost, if Peter got out of line, then Matthew would have said, that's not what Jesus said. But Matthew was sitting right there. Mark, Luke was sitting right there when it was revealed to them that Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. Because when he said further on, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because the disciples kept saying, show us the Father. You keep talking about who the Father is. Jesus said, how long have I been with you that you do not know me? For if you've seen me, he said, you've seen the Father. You're looking at God, but robed in flesh. Is what he was telling them. And so you've got to understand that you've got to buy the truth and sell it not. But understand right. that when you first are born again of water and the spirit, hell's going to fight you. Yes. Yes. Understand, sir, this faith walk you're on. Understand, man, this faith walk you're on. The devil's going to throw his whole arsenal at you. Because when you were living in the world and doing things that the world was doing, the devil wasn't bothering you. That's right. Because you weren't a threat. That's right. But the second you step from darkness into light. Yeah. Yes, come on. Hell throws its onslaught at you because hell does not want your eyes to be open. Hell does not want you to come out of darkness. Hell wants you to be broken and bound and keep walking in the same mess that had you bound before. But as they sang the song tonight, he set me free. Yes, come on. He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound by Jesus to see glory to God. He set me free. That is why you need to put on the whole armor of God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 8 says, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For when we are confident in our hope of salvation, our priorities, our attitudes, and thinking are anchored and secure. As I mentioned, the helmet guards our minds from the onslaught of the enemy of our soul. 
You've got to protect the gateways of your mind. Protect what you're listening to. Yeah. Yes, you got to pay attention even to the lyrics of songs that come at you. That's right. Because when you're listening to music and, and, and being a for, and being a musician, former musician, playing the drums, when I finally started listening to the lyrics of these, song, of these songs, I began to hear the artist's heartbeat of what they're trying to say. Some of these songs today are so vulgar in their content that we wonder why people are acting the way they're acting. Because the devil knows that music is a gateway to unlock what he wants to do in your life. Yeah. Right. If he wants to unleash perversion, then the songs are going to be perverted in nature. Right. If he wants you to have, have a mindset of wanting to harm someone, then he's going to find a way for you to hear things like that. Yes. And your mind is going to begin to push on those things. The devil's going to push on you. Right. Right. Some of these artists are crying out for help in their songs. When you listen, they're crying out for help. There's a cry there that says, I'm lost. I'm lonely. I, I, I'm bound. I don't know how to break free. But I'm going to help us tonight to understand that when you put on the whole armor of God, you can push back the wiles or the strategy of the enemy. Amen. Amen. So you've got to have on the whole armor of God. You've got to have on the helmet of salvation. You've got to have on the belt of truth. Because you've got to understand that when I walk in truth, I know what God's doing in my life. And not only that, but you can be a help to others. As I mentioned on Sunday, Paul wrote to Timothy in the first epistle of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. It says, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Paul was telling Timothy, listen, there are going to be people that are going to come to hear you preach. You need to make sure you're preaching what you heard. You need to make sure you're preaching on how you were converted. Yes. And you need to make sure that you don't pull away from the faith because there's others who's hanging the balance based on what you say. Yes, right. Understand tonight that my role as pastor of this church, that your blood will be on my hands if I do not preach the truth. Woe yes. unto me if I preach not the gospel. Woe unto me if I stand up here and preach things that are going to tickle your ears. I want you to say, yes, sometimes things come over the pulpit that step on our toes. I can be preaching around preparing to preach. God will speak to me and step on my toes. Yeah. Yes, right. come on. Because a lot of times God deals with me before I even preach it to you. That's right. Yes, that's right. God dealing with me, get this attitude right. Deal with this. A lot of people think, oh, the preacher there just wanted to yell at everybody and tell everybody how bad they are and how wrong they are. No, no, no. God deals with me too. Yes. I don't always tell you about it, but God does deal with me and God does speak to me. And God has at times rebuked me through his word and say, you need to get your attitude right. You need to adjust your heart. You need to you 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 need you need to get on the floor and pray. Right. God's spoken to me. I felt that pull to pray. I felt that pull to fast. I felt that pull to get in the Word of God because God's saying, "Hey, you got some issues you need to deal with. Yeah. You got some attitudes you need to lay down. Right. You don't you get up in that pulpit and beat up on those people. You better you better get in the prayer closet and ask me to renew your thinking and renew your heart and give you a love, a fresh love for people." Yeah. Because I can promise you, if you've been in church any length of time, you're going to walk in the building and someone's going to aggravate you. Uh -huh. If you've been in church any length of time, you know you're just going to walk in and it's going to happen. Someone's going to aggravate you. Someone's going to look at you crossways. Or someone may not even shake your hand. It may not even be intentional. That may be unintentional. That they, that they, that they, that they miss you. That, that they forgot to shake your hand. God forbid I forget to shake somebody's hand. I don't intentionally just walk past people. Sometimes I, my mind is on something and I'm headed towards something. I don't intentionally do it. But if I have in any way offended you, I apologize. It was not intentional. It's not my intention to offend you. But understand that you're going to have moments where you walk in church. And understand you're going to have moments where you get agitated and you get sideways with your brother and sister in Christ. But scripture tells us to be reconciled with one another. Yes. And that's where I'm going tonight about putting on the breastplate of righteousness. Because the breastplate guards our heart. Yes. The breastplate guards the most important thing in our body, the heart. For without the heart, of course, we'll die. We say, well, we got a brain. Yes, but the heart pumps everything. The heart pumps. The heart pushes the blood through. The heart, there's so many things that our heart does. I don't have the time to go into all of it tonight, but I just want to tell you that God is like the most protective thing. When you put on that armor, understand that the breastplate guards your back and your front. Because the vital organs of your body will all reside where the breastplate is. Your heart, your lungs, your, your spleen, your, your, your liver. Things that you wouldn't even think about. Even your gallbladder. 
that filters out impurities. Your liver filters out toxins in your body. Without a liver, you're not going to live. So that's why you got to be careful what you put into your body. Because it can mess up your liver if you're not careful. That's why you got to be careful. They talk about those things when you put it into your body. Because the Bible says, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Why would I want to put something into my body that's going to taint my body and taint my temple? I'm trying to help us here tonight that God is trying to help us. If we want to walk in victory and if we want to walk in joy and if we want to walk in peace, we need to allow the Spirit of God to renew us, uh, to, re yes. to regenerate us, to give us a fresh touch, a, a, new, a, 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 new, a fresh walk and, and a fresh anointing on our lives uh, to be able to push back the gates of hell. Can I tell you that under sound of my voice? I told my wife this tonight. I said, there are people in our church that the call of God is evident on their life. Absolutely. Even in some of our children under the age of 12. That's right. Yes. Right. Yes, amen. I can look at some of them and I already know that the call of God is evident on their life. Oh, yes. Yes, amen. That God wants to use them to do great things. Yes. I'm not one of those ones that's going to that's gonna say push the, kid, push the kids away. Because I promise you, when I was in the youth group, I can't tell you the number of times. The church people got ignited and people began to worship when the young people began to praise. That's right. That's right. That's right. Something began to happen when the young people got in the battle. Yeah. Because right. those older ones, those older, those more seasoned saints, a little tired in body, and they've been fighting for a long time. But when the young ones got it, and the young ones said, Hey, I can do this too. I realize I can be a threat to hell. I can pick up a sword. I can pick up a shield. I can get in the fight. And I can push back the gates of hell. I'm trying to tell this church here tonight that there's something that God has for us. But if we want to see it come to pass, we've got to put on the whole armor of God to push back the gates of hell. Put on the whole armor of God. We got to put on the helmet of salvation and the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness to help us walk in newness of life. Yes. Understand that when I and I mentioned this on Sunday that for me when I made this personal, when I began to realize that I can't put on my parents' armor. When you go back and read in Scripture, when David was going to go fight Goliath, Saul was trying to get him to put on someone else's armor. David's like, this armor doesn't fit me. Saul's like, but you need protection against the enemy. Goliath is a big giant. David, you need you, David, you need to put on this armor. David's like, it's not my armor. It wasn't made for me. That's someone else's burden. But I've got my own burden. That's why I gotta put on my own armor. Because there's a battle that I'm fighting that you may not be able to fight for me. So I'm gonna try to help you understand. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high, saying, Oh God, the battle belongs. To you. You've got to learn to say, This is how I fight my battles. I'm going to get on my knees and begin to do war in the spirit. I've got to put on my own armor. I've got to grab my own sword, which is the word of God. And I've got to fight against the enemy. But I also got to protect my heart because out of it flow the issues of life. We've got to protect our hearts. We've got to protect the most valuable thing, which is right here, our heart. Because what we let in our ears can affect our heart. Because the Bible says, out of the bones of the heart, the mouth, the mouth will speak. So what you let in here, so that's why the helmet is important. And the breastplate's important. Because when you guard this, it will protect this. Because you won't be spewing negativity out of your mouth. You won't be spewing hatred out of your mouth. You won't be spewing all types of negativity, all these different things uh, that are contrary to the word of God. You will speak faith and you will speak hope and you will speak life and you will speak joy and you will speak blessing. Not just on yourself, but on other people. It's important. You've got to understand. You got That's why I said you've got to watch what you say. Watch what you listen to because you've got to guard here and here. Because your ears can also affect here. Not just what you see, because we know that what you see can affect your heart, mm -hmm. but what you hear too. Yes, amen. What you hear, what you're listening to, who you're hanging out with. I said it before, there may be people in your life you're going to have to disassociate yourself That's from. Right. Yes, come on. Because they're not good for you. That's right. They're, they're not good. fit for you. They're not where, where God wants to take you. Right. And I had to make, and I know it's hard. You're like, but they're, they're my friends, but they're not helping you. That's right. Because good friends are not going to lead you into trouble. Good friends are going to lead you out of trouble. Yes. 
good for them to look you in the eyes and said on Sunday and tell you the truth, tell you the truth and say, listen, you need to shape up because where you're going, you're going to mess up your life. Understand there are other people connected to you that God wants you to reach, but you can't reach them if you're bound and shackled by the world. That's why God wants us to be full of the Holy Ghost and with power so that we can put on the armor and get in the field and get into fighting for our families, get into fighting for our children, get into fighting for our ministry, begin to fight for whatever God's put in our life and say, devil, I've got a made up mind. God's been too good to me. I'm not going to allow you to pull me from the presence of God. I'm not going to allow you to pull the anointing off my life. I'm not going to allow you to take me back to the pit that God has brought me from. I'm not going to allow you to pull me back. I'm not going to allow you to take me back. I'm not going to allow you to take my children. I'm not going to allow you to take my marriage. I'm not going to allow you in my house. So I'm putting on the whole armor of God. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we're going to draw a line in the sand. I think of that old song by Kirk Carr that said, Satan, this is it. We're tired of taking it. We declare war. We declare war against the enemy. I think that other song that says, um, was it war? This means war? Charles Jenkins? I can't think of the rest. I'm not going to mess up the lyrics. It'll come to me in a minute. It always does that. Yes, you can't have my family. You can't have my breakthrough. You can't have my joy. You can't have my peace. Whatever God has promised to me, you can't have. There's a ministry God's given me. There's a destiny God's given to this church. And it's time for us to wake up and to get in the battle and begin to fight for the promises of God that have been prophesied over this church going back years ago. The word of God is not dead because Scripture says that his words are not returned to me. But if we want to see it come to pass, we need to grab a sword. We need to put on the breastplate. We need to get in the battle and begin to swing it and begin to push back the gates of hell. There's a promise God's given to this church. I feel the Holy Ghost. There's a promise God's given to this church. There's a destiny God's given to this church. There's going to be victory here. There's going to be joy here. There's going to be restoration here. Ministries are going to be birthed here. We're going to save preachers out of this church. Holy Ghost. There's an anointing that's on this church that we're going to send people. God's going to send people to us and then we're going to train them and we're going to send them out. We're going to do the work of God right here in Waycross and see the world impacted, not just Waycross, but Ware County also. If you believe it, clap your hands unto the Lord. I'm going to fight for what's mine. I'm going to fight for what belongs to me. I'm going to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Because I recognize and understand. This is just, this is this got to be personal to me. Jesus is not just my parents, God. But he's become my God. I got to make it personal. You need to make it personal. You need to make your declaration tonight. That tonight it's going to be personal. I'm not leaving this place tonight until I get it personal. So it's personal between me and God. As I focus on tonight, the breastplate of righteousness. Ephesians 6, 14, saying, therefore... Having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. The piece is a piece of armory. The breastplate protects, as I mentioned, the vital organs of the torso. The full Roman breastplate came in two pieces. One to cover the front, the chest, and to cover the back. They understood, the Roman armies understood, that in the event the enemy tries to attack the opposite side, they'll be covered. They understood that. They said, I can't always watch my back, but I'm going to trust that the guy, that the other soldier behind me is going to watch my back. Or as they say, I guess in... Uh, Call of Duty, watch my six. You ever play Call of Duty? I don't know if you have or not. I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff out there. Hopefully hopefully I'm not wrong in some way. But anywho, they're like, watch my back. You watch my back, I'll watch your back. Because I'm trying to guard this area. You're guarding this area. But I got the breastplate on to protect me. And yes, sometimes that breastplate is a little heavy. Sometimes it gets a little cumbersome. That's why you got to have the belt on to keep it together. Because when you don't have the belt of truth, of course, you're going to feel like, let me take it off. Oh, yes. come on. This is too heavy. Yeah, yeah. Pastor, I can't wear this. I can't do all this, Pastor. You're, you're, you're preaching rules on me. Let me tell you something. I would much rather have rules in place to protect me than not. That's right. If you notice the world we live in, our, our world is governed by rules. Yes. 
Because even the world recognizes that without structure, there's chaos. Right. Even the world recognizes you got to have rules. You're on a stop sign. The police are going to write you a ticket. Right. Or something worse, something fatal could happen. Right. You run a red light, something fatal could happen. That's why there's laws and even when you drive. Yep. Speed limit. Pay attention to that stuff. That's why they say things like don't text and drive. Why? Because it's important. They want you paying attention to the road, paying attention to what's going on around you because if you're not paying attention, someone else could be hurt. So if you don't have your breastplate on and you're not paying attention to the battle, someone else in the room can be hurt. Someone connected to you can be hit by a fiery dart from the enemy. Your family could be overrun because you're not paying that attention. But I've come to rise. I feel the Holy Ghost. I've come to rise tonight to, to sound the alarm to some parents and some grandparents, uh, some aunts and some uncles, some moms and some dads, uh, that you need to stand at attention uh, and have the armor on uh, and keep watch over your house. Yes. Keep watch over your house. Keep watch over your home. Yes. Keep watch over your babies. Keep watch over what's important to you. You can't have my family. You can't have my breakthrough. Right. You can't have what belongs to me. Because yes. what God has for me is for me. Yes. Amen. The book of Ephesians, in the book of Ephesians, the breastplate is called righteousness. In 1 Thessalonians, the breastplate is called, is labeled as faith and love. Faith and love incorporate all the values of righteousness. Yes. By faith, we are bound to Jesus Christ. By love, we are bound to each other, the brotherhood or the family of God. And when we wear the breastplate, breastplate of righteousness, we are faithful in our relationship with God yeah. and faithful in our correct behavior towards our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is righteousness. Yes. The breastplate guards our heart. And when our hearts are guided by godly principles, it's easy for one to follow a life of righteousness. Yes, yes the world has rules, but sometimes even the world will skirt the rules to fit their own agenda. As I said on Sunday, or as I preached last week on covenants, God doesn't play when it comes to covenants. Yeah. Because he's saying, listen, if you do what I'm asking you to do, I'll protect you. Yeah. If, you, if, if, you if you abide by my words, abide by the godly principles that I instituted in my word. Because if you live your life in accordance to the word of God, right. this is how you should guide your life, the word of God. That's right. The world, that's why the world's pushing against the word of God. Yes. Because the, world, the word of God brings conviction. The word of God is supposed to change you. Not supposed to condemn, it's supposed to change you. Yes. The word of God is supposed to convict because God wants to pull you up out of unrighteousness and pull and put you in righteousness. Yes. Yes. He wants to pull you from brokenness and put you in and place you in a place of wholeness. Yes. That's what the word of God does. The Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And I'm not trying to jump to the sword of the spirit. That might be the next one I get on. In, in our series, but but I'm trying to tell you, if you want to be able to walk in righteousness and you want to be able to have the joy of the Lord, you not, a, not only need to have a prayer life, yeah, yeah. but you need to be reading the Word of God. That's, That's right. right. That's right. If you've got a smartphone, there's a Bible app you can download, yep. and you can play it while you're getting ready for work. Right. You can play it on your way to your job. Right. If you're able to wear headphones at your desk, play the Word of God while you're at your desk. Yeah. Let the word of God get in you. Let the word of God surround you. And let the word of God go to work on your behalf. Yes. Because the devil knows that if they get the word in them, I can't touch them. Because they'll be covered by the spirit of God. They'll have on the breastplate. They won't, they won't dabble in unrighteousness. Huh? They'll walk in their job with their head held high and say, I am a child of God. Huh? I'm a blood-bought, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized, right to hell. Huh? There's nothing that the devil can throw at me huh? that will knock me from what God's done in my life huh? and how God's going to use me huh? because I got on the breastplate of righteousness. Huh? I'm not going to let the world take me huh? or try to make me water down what God's done in my life. Huh? I refuse to compromise. Huh? Righteousness of God kept me. Yes. The righteousness of God looking out for me. Yes. He wants us to walk in righteousness with him. 
He doesn't want us to be tainted by the world's ways. Like put on the breastplate of righteousness. Put it on. Put it on so the devil can't can't move you. Put it on so you can't be knocked backwards. Put it on. Put on the breastplate. So the devil can't get to your heart. The Bible says in Proverbs 4.23, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Romans 13.12 says, The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Envy, but in verse 14 says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, yes. and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Right. So when we put on the armor of God, we're putting on the Lord Jesus Christ, yes. so that we're not making provision for our flesh to give in the temptation yes. that can cause us to stumble yes. and can cause us to fall. Yes. Because the devil wants you to go back to what God brought you from. The devil wants you to go back to drunkenness and, and debauchery and all types of immoral stuff. The devil wants you to go back to having a perverted mind. The devil wants you to go back to having a broken home. The devil wants you to come home and there's always strife in your house and you're fighting with one another. That's what the devil wants you to go back to. But God's like, when you put on the armor, you can push the gates of hell right out your house. Come on. I remember many times when I was a kid, my mom would come home and something wasn't feeling right. She'd grab that bottle of oil, olive oil and get to anoint every door and every window and get to praying. And then my dad would start praying. And when my dad started praying, it felt like the whole house shook. Yes. Something happens when Willie Cole started praying. Because it wasn't no quiet prayer. He would get loud. He didn't care if the neighbors heard. He'd be in the house saying, I plead the blood over my family. God, I ask that you prepare a place in your kingdom for, for, for my boys, Tim, Jason, and Patrick. I ask you prepare a place for them in your kingdom to serve. I ask that your anointing would flow, would flow from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. I ask that you direct their path. I ask that you give them a heart to love you and a heart to serve you and a desire to reach other people. Give them a heart to stand out. Give them a heart to be strong. Give them a heart, God, for your people. Give them a heart, God, to love those that are lost. Give them a heart. My mother would pray those prayers over us as a kid. Yep. She still prays those prayers today, even over her grandchildren. Yep. She'll get down. She said she heard us at a ladies' conference in Maine. She'll get down on her knees, and she'll say, she'll pray this every night. Lord, prepare a place in your kingdom for my children to serve. That's right. mm -hmm. Prepare a place for, and she would call everybody by name. Mm -hmm. She'd call my brother, his wife, all of his kids. She'd call my name, Sister Cole's name, Bennett and Judah. They get to my brother Patrick, his wife, their little boy. She'd just be calling everybody's name out. Lord, prepare a place for them in your kingdom yes. to serve. God, lead them and guide them. Guide yes. their life. Give them a heart to serve you. Give them a heart that's pure. Yes. Give them a heart to love you. Give them a boldness to stand. I know that it's hard. As I mentioned on Sunday, it's hard to stand for truth when everybody wants you to compromise. And everybody wants to go their own way. And everybody wants to do their own thing. Everybody wants their ears to be tickled. Everybody wants, wants this. They want the preacher to do this. They want the, the church to lay down holiness. Scripture says, without which no man shall see the Lord. That's why when you put on the breastplate, the breastplate was a shining, glistening weapon. Yes. Yeah. It was usually made of brass, bronze, gold, or some other reflective metal. And it, it was often highly polished to reflect the light and dazzle and blind and confuse the enemy. Wow. So when they put their... Then when they shine the breastplate and they get in the sun and the sun will reflect the light, the purpose was to blind the enemy and let them know you can't see me, but you see the glory. You see the glory of God shining through me. That's why God wants you to put on the armor so that the light, his light can shine through a dark world so that they can see the goodness of God. First, they're going to be like, what is that? They might lash out at you uh, because they've been in darkness so long they don't recognize the light. Uh, but as they get closer to the light, uh, it'll be like a moth through a flame. Uh, what is that? Uh, i got to know more about that. Uh, i got to know more about this Holy Ghost you're talking about. Uh, what's this joy you walk into school with? Uh, what's this joy you walk on your job with? Uh, what's this joy I always see on your face? And you can say it's the light of God. It's the glory of God that's shining through me. 
you put on that breastplate and you begin to shine it. And it begins to glisten. People begin to see the glory of God. The Bible records in 2 Thessalonians. I'm trying to hurry to a close. It's 802. The Bible records 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. It says, And then shall the wick, that wicked be revealed, when, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Let's talk about the breastplate, the brightness. It said before, the darker the night, the brighter the light. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let your light shine. Put on the glory of the glory of God is revealed when we put on the, the breastplate, the breastplate of righteousness. Yes, amen. You put it on, you begin to shine. And you begin to hold your head up high. And people begin to see the glory of the Lord round about you. Because you're putting on the glory of God. You're letting that light shine through. You're not letting your heart be tainted. Yes, I know it's hard to go to school and, and you're dealing with all those things. Hear me now. When the public school I went to, I know for a fact, and I'm just, I'm just going to go ahead and say, I know for a fact the public school I went to, there were kids smoking weed in the bathroom. Oh, yeah. And we knew which bathroom not to go in. Because you could smell it down the hall. Yes, I do know what it smells like. I do know what that smells like. There were kids that would come to me and say, hey, don't you want to go to the party? Don't you want to do all those things? Let me tell you something. Yes, I had temptations come at me. Man. People would think, well, you never, I, it would bother me when people would say to me, you never did anything bad, did you? Right, come on. Like, like man, like, I've never been tempted. Right. I've never had people ask me to take a sip of alcohol. Right. There were, I, yes, I have had people ask me that. That's right. I've had people ask me to dabble in immoral things, in, in, of immorality. Yeah. I've had people ask me those things. But the only reason why I'm standing here today is I had to make a choice. Yes. I had to make a choice and say that if I do that, I will take my witness to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because you already know I go to church. Right. You already know I'm a tongue talker. You already know that the church I go to, they roll on the floor. Right. You already know the church I go to, they're exuberant in their worship. Yeah. You already know the church that I go to. Yeah. You know what I go the church I go to. You felt the spirit of God. Yeah. And you've seen and you've seen the glory of God move. So if I get involved with that, I take my witness. Yeah, right. And then I can't witness to you about the mercy of God. That's right. Yes. Listen to me tonight. I know peer pressure is tough. Yes, yep. is. I know it's tough. Yep. And I know that it's there. Yep. And I know because it's hard even on the preacher. Right. There, there's pressure on me as pastor. Yep. Compromise. Yep. Let down holiness. Just, just let it out the window. Just let everything go. Yep. Right. I'm trying to build a church, not a crowd. I'm trying to get you to heaven. I'm trying to be pleasing to the Lord. I want his anointing to reside here. Because when his anointing resides here, good things begin to happen. Yes, amen. That's why you got to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Because the breastplate represents the light of the Lord shining through us. That's why we got to be filled with the spirit of God. If we want to see the world and the music can come, to, to the music can come. If we want to see the light of the world, Though if we want the world to see the light of God in us, we must be filled with the Spirit of God. We must wear the breastplate. Well, Pastor, I'm concerned about my friends that put me out of, their, out, of, out of the social circle. And I'm concerned about my family. They, they, they won't really want to talk to me. Because uh, I'm talking about the things God's done in my life. How do you know that they're going to reject you? How do you know that your friends are going to shun you? How do you not know that your friends ain't been going home crying at night saying, God, I'm tired of this life. Yeah. I'm tired of walking into brokenness. I'm tired of walking into a broken home. I'm tired of walking into strife. I'm tired of walking in depression. I'm tired of walking with anxiety sitting on me. I want to be free. I, I want to have your joy. I want, I want joy. I want peace. There's got to be something better than this. Yeah. There has to be something better than this. Hear me tonight. I'm not here to be mean to you. I'm not, I'm not here to belittle you. So don't think that that's my intent. No, it's not at all. What I'm trying to do is get you to recognize that you need to put on the whole armor of God. Amen. To push back the gates of hell. Hold your head up high. Don't be ashamed of what God's done in you. When you walk into Kroger, be proud. That's right. That's right. Be proud. Yes, I am a Christian. Right. I am an apostolic. Right. I am born again. I am a C-H. I am a C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. Yes. 
I'm a C-H-R-I-S-T in my H-E-A-R-T and I will L-I- See if you're paying attention. Right. There's another song I can think of. A song by Dan Dean that says, I choose to be a Christian. Yes. I choose to be like him. There's nobody making me do it. This is how I want to live. You decide for you. And I'll decide for me. The choice is mine, but it's what I choose to be. I choose to be this. I choose, I choose to be authentic in my worship. I choose this life because you don't know what God has done for me. So we all stand to our feet here. Please hear me tonight. I don't want you to be labeled, and I don't want to be labeled a hypocrite. Because I felt that the press plate was too heavy to wear. But the light from the brightness of the breastplate pushes back the darkness and attracts others that are curious to know more about God. In the early 90s, there was a group called Millie Vanilla. And they, they became a, a hit group, even won a Grammy for a hit song. Don't, please don't sing it. They won a Grammy for a hit song. But when people found out that they weren't even singing on the album, they were labeled hypocrites. They were shunned. They even took their Grammy away from them. Because the music industry felt, you, you lied to us. You didn't portray yourself as authentic. You put out there that you were doing this, but in reality, you weren't. That's why I'm trying to tell you to put on the whole armor of God because it will give you the strength to be authentic in a world that is hungry for truth. Your friends, your family, your co-workers, the people that you associate with, I promise you, there's somebody in your social circle that is hungry for more. But they won't know about it if your faith in your walk with God. I, I've said it before. You can't be one way in here and another way out there. You can't come in here on Sunday, think the power of God's gonna set, gonna fall on you when Saturday your life you were living your life like, like God didn't even exist. Because the world will spot it. They'll recognize you. You're not who you say you're supposed to be. But I want to encourage us tonight to draw closer to God. That's why I'm preaching this message, this, this series on the armor of God. Because I'm trying to get us to understand. God wants us to draw closer. And there's promises that He's given His church. But he wants us to put on the armor and to go fighting for it. As Sister Danielle begins to sing and begins to play, I invite you to come to this altar. Come and spend some time with God before you leave here today. Say, God, baptize me afresh. Rebaptize me with your spirit. Rebaptize me with your love. So I can walk in newness of life. I want to have the whole armor on. So I can push back the gates of hell. This altar's open. Come on.